And of course, uh, those who are watching online, we want to say good morning to each and every one of you, whether you're watching via Facebook or Instagram, uh, church's website, however you might be viewing us, YouTube, we want to welcome you this morning and thank you for joining us here at First Baptist on Gresham Road. Glad to have these pastors with us this morning. Glad to have Pastor McQueen with us, amen, with us this morning. God bless you, Pastor McQueen. Glad to have Pastor Janice Ray with us this morning as well. God bless you. Amen. Uh, Pastor Jimmy Aaron Owens, our minister of music and worship, grateful to God to see him this morning. And, of course, uh, to all of our ministers who might be spread out throughout the uh, sanctuary, and those who are watching online as well, we want to say good morning. And, of course, to our deacons of First Baptist Church and leadership, Deacon James Davis. Amen. Amen. We thank God. Thank God for, for all of our deacons at First Baptist and the mothers. Amen. And look, look at look at Mama Griffin with her African attire on. Go on with your bad self. Amen. And and we thank God. Thank God for all of you. Thank you, ushers. Thank you for being here. We are grateful to God for all of you. Amen. It certainly is a blessing. Thank you, Brother Elijah, on the drums over there, and all of our musicians. And listen, I'm not going to prolong the hour. Amen. Of course, this month we know is uh, Black History Month. And uh, shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't just relegate it to one month. We should celebrate all year round. Uh, however, the world has set, us, uh, set aside a time for us to recognize and remember how far God has brought us from. And we want to make sure that we do that. Amen? Amen. Uh, so at this time, we're going to go ahead and, and get started. Thank you, uh, Pastor Jimmy Owens. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with our, uh, our worship celebration. Let the church say amen.
Come on and clap your hands with me. 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 Clap your hands with me. this morning and he didn't want to start us on our, our way giving him all the glory and all the honor and all the praise amen though the storm keep raging in my life and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day still there's hope that lies within reassure as I keep my eye upon the distant shore I know he'll leave me safely that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storm don't see and if the wind keeps on i 
there's gonna be storms that the wave and the current seem so free but in the word of God I got an anchor yes I do If the wind keeps on blowing in my life, my soul help me. Anchor The hills may roll, break the day may flash. I shall not wait before he hold me fast. She's still here. We just sing that song together and, and it just keep me going. I don't care what comes or what goes. I always know my soul got to be anchored to him. I got to keep on holding his hand. If I hold his hand. The billows may rose, breakers they may dash. I should not sway because he hold me fast. So dark the days, clouds in the sky. I know it's all right. Cause Jesus is not my soul, my soul, my soul, my soul. My soul, Lord, my soul, yes, my soul, yes, my soul. Church, amen. Amen. How many of us have that same testimony? 
our soul, our soul is anchored in the Lord. Amen. I like that. Amen. All the stuff going on around you, all the mess, all the haters in your life, all the foolishness that's going on. If your soul is anchored, amen, no matter what comes your way, all you have to do is hold God's unchanging hand. And God will, God has, amen, take care of all your needs. Amen. Let's thank God for uh, thank God for Deacon Smith and music ministry. And we thank God. He's been mighty good to us. God has been mighty faithful to us. And listen, uh, we want to at this time uh, dismiss our children. Amen. Our children have their very own. I want to thank First Lady. Dismiss our children. Their very own church service today. Let's give them a hand. Amen. Amen. Teens too. Amen. Our teens as well. Our children and teens. We're going to dismiss them at this time. Let's give them a hand. Thank God. See Pastor Strozier back there. And, uh, and take our teens and our and first lady will be taking uh, the young people, our children. Amen. We're grateful to God for them. Amen. Amen. They have their very own church service. And we're grateful to God for them. And we want to make sure we take care of their needs as well. Amen. Amen. Let church say amen. Amen. Again, I want to say good morning to all those who are watching us live. Uh, whether you're here in the metro Atlanta area, whether you're in uh, Waycross, Georgia, Columbus, uh, Greenville, South Carolina, uh, Rock Hill, amen, Aunt Celeste up there in Rock Hill, Kentucky, wherever you might be, Richmond, Virginia, we'll give you a shout out as well, but we thank God for all those who are watching us live right now, and we want to send a shout out to them, amen, God is so good, God is so good, I see Nicole White Shepherd online, Ms. Brenda Ford, and so many others, listen, listen, we're going to go ahead and get started, let's start off with a word of prayer. And we'll get right into the word. Father, we thank you right now. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for being so good to us. That you woke us up this morning. Allowed us to have clothes and shelter. Food on the table. Father, you blessed us in ways that are beyond our ability to understand. And for that we say thank you. And Father, I pray today that you give your people a word that will be instant and in season. And I pray that you help me not to preach or teach with enticing words of man's wisdom but in demonstration of the Holy Ghost and power. I pray that somebody will get a word from you. I don't know everything, but you do. I pray that you give your people a word that they can use right away that will answer a question, that will relieve them of some stress, that will give them some hope to carry on to do the work you called them to do. Have your way today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. That church say amen. 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 Real quick, real quick, Sister Tesh. If you all would, please turn with us to Jeremiah. Amen. Jeremiah. Got to see Pastor Devo this morning. Amen. Jeremiah, the 51st chapter. <clears throat> and we're going to look at verse 36. Jeremiah. Shell, Carmichael, you, you got that? Jeremiah, 51st chapter, verse 36. Amen. Deacon Simpson and Deacon Townsend, Mama Simpson, Mama Townsend, miss y'all. Amen. But I know you all are tuned in every, every Sunday. Amen. Deacon Curry, I see you out there. Mama Curry, see you all as well. Jeremiah 51, 36. Jeremiah 51, 36. And Brother White, here's what it says. Let's read it together. It says, this is what the Lord says to Jerusalem. I will be your lawyer to plead your case, and I will avenge you. I will dry up her river as well as her springs. Come on, Deacon and Sister Logan, let's read that one more time. It says, this is what the Lord says to Jerusalem. I will be your lawyer to plead your case. I will avenge you. I will dry up her river as well as her springs. Amen. Aunt Lillian, I want to talk very briefly from this subject. God, your defense attorney. God, your defense attorney. God, your defense attorney. Lakeisha, God, your defense attorney. Brothers and sisters, uh, I don't know about you, but every now and then in our lives, uh, you run into situations or you run into people who, for whatever reason, are opposing you. Uh, run into to situations for, for no uh, understandable reason. Folk, uh, you have what, what the... <laughs> what we call haters. You have people who come against you and try to set you up for failure and cause harm in your life, ruin your reputation, uh, throw you off your course, get you to be unfocused on what it is 
that God has called you to do. A hater can show up anywhere. A hater can show up in your own household. A hater can show up. I wish y'all praying with me. I hate to even say this. A hater can show up in your church. A hater can show up on your job. A hater can show up in the community. A hater can pop up from anywhere. Walmart, haters can, can, can show up. Online, haters can, can, can show their ugly faces. A hater can be anywhere, and a hater does not have to have had anything bad from you happen. Sometimes folk just hate on you simply because of how they feel about themselves. They have their own insecurities. They have their own issues, their own mindsets. Their minds are, are twisted and perverted, and they have in their mind whatever it is, even though you've never said anything or done anything to to cause them harm, Brother Ferguson, they have in their mind that somebody is out to get them and they want to be first to get you. You got to watch a hater. Haters are, are, are very sneaky. They, they pat you on the back one day and the next day they're stabbing you in your back. You help them one day. You serve them one day. You provide for them one day. You visit them one day and yet, for whatever reason, they turn to stab you in the back. I wonder if there are any folks in here today who have ever had to deal with a hater. Ever had to deal with a, a person who has come up against you, who accuses you, and they don't even realize it. That all they're doing is, is being obedient to what Satan's resume is. You know what his resume is? To steal kill and destroy all they want to do is set you up for failure oh a hater haters are something else i wonder if there's anybody Laura Greer, on the in in, in on, online who's watching this morning who has ever had to deal with a hater in your life can i flip it for a minute i wonder if you've ever been a hater Mm, got quiet on there. Y'all were just shouting on the on, on folk bothering you. I wonder if you have been the one to bother somebody else. If you have been the one to pursue somebody, even though they haven't done anything wrong. I wonder if you've been the one to set somebody else up for failure, to try to mess them up for whatever reason. Well, God today is calling you back in. If you are a child of God, why don't you just leave folks alone? Let God, if they did do something wrong, let God do his work because here's the problem that a hater does not realize. The problem the hater does not realize is that after you keep bothering somebody, particularly a child of God, God is going to turn it over on you. And eventually the same hole that you're digging for somebody else, you're going to fall in it yourself. Haters beware. You cannot bother a child of God and expect to get no consequences. Be not deceived. Thank you, Pastor McQueen. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. God said to Jeremiah, Brother and sister White, he said, I'll be your lawyer. What does a lawyer do? I know we have some attorneys who are watching. We have attorneys who are members of the church. What, what does the attorney do? The attorney collects all the facts, does some research on whatever the accusations may be, and instead of the, the person who is being accused uh, uh, going out to plead their case, they pay the lawyer, which I'll talk with me, to go up and argue their case. Why? Because the lawyer is an expert in law. Whatever field it is that you may be dealing with, whatever issue, uh, you get the right lawyer. And because they are an expert, they know the ins and outs of the law. <clears throat> they understand how to argue it. They know how the judge is going to think. They know how to appeal to the jury. The lawyer is an expert in what he or she does. 
So you pay somebody to argue your case. And here is what God says to us. Those who are being hated right now, those who are going through persecution and prosecution and foolishness. God says it in Jeremiah 51, 36. He says, this is what the Lord says, Shirley Williams and Robert. I will be your lawyer to do what, Tamara? To plead your case and. Not only am I going to be your lawyer, Alton, he said, I, and I will avenge you. Kim, did you hear that? He said, I'll avenge you. I'll dry up her river as well as her spring. What does it mean to avenge? I'm going to get them. Can I give you the Gresham Road definition? I got them. Don't worry about them. I'm going to handle them. They hating on you. They trying to set you up for failure. If you put it in my hands, let me avenge you. I'm going to show how righteous you are. I'm going to show that you're not as bad as they say you are. I am going to plead your case for you. And not only am I going to plead your case, but I'm going to render a ruling and I'm going to sentence them myself. God said, not only am I your lawyer, but he's also the judge. What does that mean? <clears throat> if God is on your side, you have what the world would call, Pastor Devo, an unfair advantage. You got the lawyer, you did digging power, and the judge on your side. <laughs> he said, I'm going to plead your case and I'm going to render the ruling. God ain't going to lose. I'll lose. You'll lose. When you try to do it yourself, when you try to, 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 to argue and try to, to render the ruling yourself, you and I would lose because we, and it doesn't matter how, how powerful and how intelligent and how competent we think we are, because we don't know everything, we will lose. This is burned dead, but God said just, Hand it over to me. You sit down in the chair next to me. And I'm going to stand up. Come on, Mama Bachelor. And argue your case. And when I'm finished arguing, I'm going to sit in the judge's seat. I'll listen to what other folk got to say. But I'm already argued your case. And I'm going to render rule in your favor. Woo! I don't know about you. That made me happy right now. I, I know y'all quiet. Somebody say, well, I, I don't have, I'm not going into anything. I believe that there are a few people who are sitting in here today or who are listening online, uh, Sister uh, 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 Reba, who can testify that there are times in your life where it seems like there is no way that you're going to get out of the situation you're in. But God wants you to know this morning, I got you. Come on, Pastor Carla uh, and Arthur. I got you. Everything is going to be all right. Come on, Miss Shorter, Miss Shorter, Miss Tomini. When does God defend me? Come on, let's talk about that real quick, uh, Sister Barbara Williams. When does God, when does God defend me? When does he defend me, Deacon Davis? When can I rely on God to defend me? Come on, let's walk through it real quick. Come on, Mama, Mama Ida, you got me? Number one, number one, God defends me. I want you to write this down. God defends me when I recognize him, listen, as my everything. Lynn, did you hear that? Beta, Phyllis, <clears throat> God defends me when I recognize him as my everything. Mama Jones, you got that? God defends me. Come on, Sonova. When I recognize him as my everything. Come on, Brother Ferguson. God defends me. Write it down. <clears throat> when I recognize him as my everything. Here it is, Mama. Psalm 121, 1 through 8. We sing the song. Here's what it says. It says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Then he asked the question, from whence come my help? He's not saying I lift up my eyes and my help comes from the hills. He's asking a question. I will lift up my eyes. And he's asking the question, from whence comes my help? Where does my help come from? Then he finishes answering. Watch this, Lentarius. He answers the question, verse 2. He says, my help 
comes from, here it is, the Lord who made heaven and earth. My help doesn't come from the hills. My help does not come from Capitol Hill. My help does not come from Democrats and Republicans. My help does not come from somebody sitting in a public office. My help does not come from my supervisor. My help, I wish y'all were praying with me, comes from the Lord. I know we think people have seats of power, but guess who gave them the seat of power? God can put anybody in your corner. Why? Because you recognize him as your everything. The psalmist said it right here. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Verse 3, look at what he says. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber no matter what they do to you. Come on, Brother White. God said they can't move you out of a position that I put you in. I'm going to say it one more time. God said it doesn't matter how your haters come. It doesn't matter how they try to set you up for failure. It does not matter what they say about you. God said I will not allow your foot to be moved. Why? Because I placed you where you are and you recognize that I am your everything. Not all the folk around you. Not the people in power. God said if you recognize that I am the, your source. He said, I won't allow your foot to be moved. And then listen to what he says. He says, listen, listen to what he says. He says, he who keeps you will not slumber. I was just listening, Sister Barnett, to a song by Take Six. And the title of that song was, He Never Sleeps. God never sleeps. You, you get weary every now and then. Uh, your, 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 your haters may get tired every now and then. They may plot all through the night to see what they can do to set you up for failure. But God said, don't you worry. You go on to sleep. You go ahead and lay your head on the pillow. I got my eye on them. And no matter what kind of plan they set up, God said, I already know what they're going to do, and I'm going to take care of it in advance. I wish y'all were praying with me. Somebody needs to know that God does not sleep, nor does he slumber. It says, behold, he who keeps uh, Israel shall ne neither sleep, neither slumber, nor sleep. Verse 5 says, the Lord is your keeper. Woo! Don't make me preach. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day. Come on, Dr. Owens, we, we done saying this. Nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. Now, let's talk, take a look at this. He said he'll preserve you from all evil. And he'll preserve your soul. He'll preserve you from evil. He'll pres preserve your soul. There's a difference now between your soul and your spirit. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Remember, Scripture says uh, that, that it cuts even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Ms. Bachelor, you taught me that one now. That there's a scripture that talks about how there, there's, a, there's a, 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 a divide between the soul and the spirit. Your, your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Now, y'all pray with me? And how many of us can testify that there are times when you are going through trouble in your life and your mind gets messed up? Your mind starts going all over the place. Your mind takes you on a ride. Your mind uh, has you to think about all the negative things that could possibly happen. Your, your mind will take you down a road. And before you know it, your mind has gone to so many different places that it affects your body. You become depressed. You become upset. You sleep all day. You become quiet and withdrawn. And you don't want to say everything. What God is saying right here. He says it in his word. He says, the Lord shall preserve you from all evil, and he shall preserve your soul. In other words, I'll give you peace. Y'all not talking to me. In the midst of the storm. Isaiah 26, 3 says this. It says, thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Why, Sister McQueen? Because he trusted in thee. God said, all I need you to do while you're going through whatever you might be going through 
is keep your mind on me. I know they're going to say stuff. I know they're going to send emails. I wish y'all talked with me. I know that they're going to talk about you behind your back. I know the, the rooms and the places they've gone to, to hate on you and, and try to ruin your, your reputation. I know that they're going to send little stuff to you to try to agitate you and get on your nerves. But God said, as long as you keep your mind and your eyes and your thoughts on me, I will keep you, come on, Kim, in perfect peace. You know why we worry? You know why we worry? We worry because we allow Satan to take over our thoughts. We take our eyes off of God. Hmm? See, what, what happens is the more you, you think about your problems, the more it affects your body. Are y'all praying with me? That's why he said in, in Joshua, the first chapter, he, he talked about it. He says, uh, this book of the law shall not depart, come on, Miss Bachelor, out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. For then thou shalt have good, good, good success, and then thou shalt have what? Perfect peace. That's all right, y'all good? We're, we're all right. He said, if you keep your mind on me, if you meditate on my word, it drowns out. What your haters are doing. Y'all not talking with me. It drowns out what the doctor said. It drowns out that your husband or your wife is acting crazy. It drowns out all the stuff. If you keep your mind on God. But we allow the devil to get to us. Latissa. And we start focusing on the mess. Instead of looking at God. We all right? Verse 8. Come on, come on, sister Burned it. It says, the Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. He said, if you recognize me as your everything, I got you. I don't care what they say about you. I got you. I don't care how they come against you. I got you. I don't care uh, what, what, what kind of stuff they set up to destroy you. I got you. If you recognize me as your everything. All right, that was just number one. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, Shirley Green, Deborah Haynes, come on, Shell, come on. Come on, Miss C, Miss C, you ready? Mama Mitchell, here it is. Number two, God defends me when I realize, listen to this, you're not going to like this one, that I am overpowered by my enemy. Mm-hmm. Now, some of you don't like that one. Kim White, here it is. Realize that I'm overpowered by my enemy. Well, preacher, but that, that don't sound right. God defends me when I realize I'm overpowered. Yeah. Come on, let's, let's talk real quick. Jeremiah 51, 36. We read this. This is our focal scripture. This is what the Lord says, <clears throat> Deacon Townsend, Deacon Simpson, to Jerusalem. I will be your lawyer to plead your case, and I will avenge you. I will dry up her river as well as her springs. But the point is, God defends me when I'm, I realize I'm overpowered. See, I'm overpowered. Didn't say God was overpowered. You know what I've, I've watched? I watch, uh, and maybe it may, may not be the best thing to do sometimes, or whatever. But I watch every now and then, I watch these court cases. And some of these, um, the accused, I won't say they're criminals, but some of the accused are so arrogant that they think that they can argue their own case and they waive the lawyer. Hmm? They, they plead their own case. They say, I, I got it, I'm going to argue. You done read four books. Come on. 
didn't even finish all of them. Some of them were boring, so you skipped over that. You read, read you four books while you were waiting for your case to, to, to pop up on the docks. And you done read four books. And now you are, in your mind, a Harvard-trained lawyer. And you're going to go up and argue your case against a, 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 a lawyer who has gone to law school, who has gone to college, who has passed the bar exam, who understands the jury, who understands the judge, who knows all the ins and outs of the court, and you have become so arrogant that you think that just because, quote, unquote, you didn't do it, that you are the expert, that you are, are an expert enough to argue your own case. And brothers and sisters, there are times in your life where you have to look at a situation and say, you know what? If, if, brothers and sisters, somebody comes up against me, uh, they, they have all these folks to back them. I wonder if there's any folk in here today who had some folk line up against you. Who, who have lined up and said, I, I got them on this one and I, I got them on that point and I, I got somebody to, to argue this for, for them. Uh, do you realize that when they arrested Jesus, that the, 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 the accusers, the haters had set up all kinds of people to lie on Jesus? They said, well, you say that he said this, and, and I need you to say this about him, and I need you to accuse him of this. And they had set all this stuff up. And you know what Jesus did, the Bible said? He never said a mumbling word. Woo! Didn't say nothing. He just sat back. I said, God, though he was God, is going to defend me. Sometimes you got to realize that you're overpowered by your enemy. They got folk to lie on you. They have people who are trying to set you up for failure. They might have the biggest attorney in the world. All these folk working against you. And when you realize that you're overpowered, see, when you, when you think you got it yourself, you start doing stuff because you're arrogant. You start doing stuff to get yourself out of trouble, and you don't realize that what they have in their corner will overpower you. So what do you do? A wise person, when they realize that they are overpowered by their enemy, what do they, they do? They submit. But this time, we're not submitting to our enemy. We're submitting to God. Have you ever prayed a prayer in your closet? Say, God, I don't know what to do. God, I don't know how to handle this situation. God, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. I don't know how things are going to work out. I don't know uh, what, what's going to come of this. Uh, God said, great, you're at the point now where I can take over. You sit down. You stay on your knees. You lay down somewhere, and as long as you put it in my hands, I will stand up. If you're trying to argue your case, I can't be your lawyer while you're arguing. You sit Sit down in the seat, and when you sit down, I'll stand up, and I will plead your case for you. But as long as you think you got it on your own, as long as you're trying to pull in all the folks you know, and all your hookups, and all the money you got, and who has this, and who knows that person, as long as you're doing that, God says, I'm going to turn it over to you. But God said, if you sit your behind down somewhere and let me handle this, I'll take care of your enemy. I'll argue for you. And that's a message for somebody here today. God said, just sit down. I got it. And you know why we don't sit down? We don't sit down because we don't really trust God. We don't really trust him. No, 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 no. You can sing in this church. Listen to me. <clears throat> Those online, beat them. You, you can sing in the church, fall out in, in the pews, in the spirit, lay out on the floor and, and speak in tongues. You can do all that. But the only 
thing that's going to show whether you actually believe what you sang about is trouble. Woo! Y'all, y'all ain't want to say amen on that. So you, you, can, you can jump over the pew. You can dance. You can, you can be slain in the spirit. Come on, Sonova. You can do all this stuff. But the only way that you'll really know whether or not you really trust God is to have to experience, come on, Deacon Kaysen, some trouble in your life. Trouble is, a, is an exposure of the saints. Trouble shows whether or not he is your shield or your buckler. Trouble shows whether you believe that you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. Trouble shows you whether you believe that God is your, your, your way maker and your provider in your life. Trouble exposes us. And there we are. Oh, I've done it myself. I can offer some outstanding advice when somebody else is going through trouble. Oh, come on now, somebody. They, they tell me, listen, Pastor, they, they, they got me. They, this is what happened at work. Oh, well, just listen. This is what I want you to do. I want you to focus on this scripture. I want you to pray three times. I want you to do this, that, and other. Got an answer for y'all. Come on, Sharice. But when trouble knocks on my door, there have been times all the advice that I gave, it went right out the door. Why? Because my emotions got to me and it shook me to the core and I no longer had advice for myself. Oh, I got a plan for you now. Come on, come on, bring your issue. I got, come on, sit down in my, in my office, cross my desk, keep your mask on. I, I got all this stuff. I got advice for you. But when trouble knocks on your door, it reveals who you are. I hate to tell you this. You, you ain't going to know whether, whether your praise is authentic or real until you get in some trouble. Hmm? You, you, you're not going to really, you, you, you singing that God is a comforter. You're not going to know whether or not you really believe that until you lose somebody close to you. Y'all not talking with me here. You're not going to realize that God is a lawyer in the courtroom until folk are making accusations against you. And whether you, you sit back and say, you know what? I'm not going to say a word. God is going to take care of my everyday. You're not going to know whether God can fix your situation with your husband and with your children until you go through some issues. And you have to, instead of defending yourself, keep your mouth shut. Come on, Lynn, Ryan, we can find out that God can heal Kaiser until Kaiser got sick. God is a way maker. God will take care of your every need, but you got to trust him. And you don't just start trusting God right off the block. It comes over the course of time. Through a series. See, we, 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 we want to preach that nobody is going to have problems if I'm a believer in God. God is going to shield me from problems. And God said, no, I'm not shielding you. Problems actually reveal whether you believe what you say you believe. Hmm? Let me see if you really believe. That I take care of your haters. And the only way he can find out. Is to send some haters your way. <laughs> and there you are asking God, God, why would you let me go through this? Why are you uh, uh, causing these, allowing this issue to cause, uh, to, to, to be an issue in my life? Why are you allowing these haters to come up against me? And God said, listen, listen, listen. You have a, a mental understanding of who I am. But you don't have a spiritual understanding. You got it in your head. You can quote the scripture. You, you tight with the scripture now. Good. You pull your Bible out and you, you can quote and, and thou and this and you got all the words. But what really reveals Tangie whether or not you actually believe it is to go through, and I mean this literally, is to go through a little hell. <laughs> That's it. Why did David write? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. 
He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Why did he write that? He wrote it because he'd been through some stuff. He wrote it because he was a shepherd. And he realized that through a series of calamities, through lions and, and, and foxes and bears attacking his sheep. I wish y'all talk with me. That, that the sheep only learned that their shepherd was a caretaker when they were under attack. I wish y'all talk with me. So David put it in words. I am a shepherd. So you know what he said? The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my provider. The Lord is my protector. But the only way I find out whether he is or isn't is to go through some problems. Here it is, Miss Jackson. Angela Horton, here it is. God defends me when I recognize him as my everything. Come on, got to get done. Secondly, when I realize that I'm overpowered by my enemy. Here's number three. Because I know y'all got reservations for Valentine's Day. You scheduled up brunch and all that stuff for, you, for your loved one. I'm going to get y'all out of here real quick. Come on. Amen. You and your boo. You and your boo finna go do something. Number three. God defends me <laughs> when I relax. You said it. And take him at his word. That's it, Mama Dalton. You got to relax. And take God at his word. I said relax. <laughs> you got to relax. How do I, thank you, Pastor McQueen. How do I relax? Come on, let's read the scripture. Psalm 37. This is my favorite, one of my favorite scriptures. I memorized a good portion of it. And listen, another way you can, you can keep your mind on God is to memorize scripture. Hmm? Because when trouble comes, you have God, God through the Spirit will have something to, to bring to your remembrance. But if you ain't got nothing in the bank, you can't make a withdrawal. <laughs> hmm? You need some money, guess what? You got to go to the ATM. But if you ain't put no money in there, same is true with God's word. When you need the word, if it's in there, guess what? It's going to come out. And trouble reveals what you got on the inside of you. If the first thing you do when you get in trouble is start cussing, what y'all talk, talking about? Huh? Guess what? <laughs> Ain't no overdraft protection. I wish y'all talked with me. Whatever was in there, guess what? That's what came out. You done cussed everybody out. And then when you get done, Lord, have mercy on me. You co Come on, come on, come on, come on. Excuse my French, Lord. Excuse me for cussing, Lord. Anybody ever done that before? Lord, I'm sorry for cussing. I apologize. I should have allowed the scripture to come out of my mouth. Forgive me for using profanity. And then y'all real religious folk, you know what y'all say? But the Lord know my heart. <laughs> Those are the real religious folk say, but the Lord knows my heart. So you he'll excuse anything you do. Why? Because the Lord knows your heart. Come on, come on. Y'all playing too much. Here. Look at look at verse 35. <clears throat> this is what the psalmist wrote. David said, he said, I've seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself. Come on, Bailey, Pastor Carla. And spreading himself like a green bay tree. Verse 36. Brother Kate, didn't Casey? Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. What does that mean? The enemy eventually died. And even if they don't die physically, I wish y'all talk with me, they will die uh, their uh, influence in your life. 
will eventually die. Woo, y'all not talking with me here. It says, I sought him, but he could not be found. I looked for my enemy. I, I was, was peeking around to see if they had any more activity, but I didn't see them anymore. Verse 37, come on, talk with me, God. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. The end of that man is peace. It didn't say, listen now, it didn't say the end of that man uh, never experienced hardship. It didn't say that he would never go through trials. Come on, Deacon Jimmy Mack, or, or tribulation, or persecution, or prosecution, or haters. It didn't say that, that that was the end of the man. It said the end, no matter what he went through, the end of that man, come on, Sir Smith, is peace. Come on. Verse 38, Papa Q. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together all the people plotting against you <laughs> God is going to destroy them together all of them I wish y'all talk with me are going to fall and fail hmm? come on keep reading come on bro, brother Ferguson the end of the wicked shall be cut off what do you mean the end Whatever it is that they have plotted. See, they, they've plotted everything to the end. They've set up. they got a whole plan. Do you know that there are some people who have a whole plan against you? I mean, they've actually sat down somewhere and met at Red Lobster. I wish y'all talked with me. Have, 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 have sat down at Gut Busters and, and, and they, they, they've had a whole planning meeting just for you. Plan with this is what we're gonna do on this day, and we're gonna send this in, and we're gonna do this, that, and the other. We're gonna we'll have all this set up. Well, God said it right here. The transgressors shall be destroyed altogether. The end of the wicked, whatever they got planned, shall be cut off. Verse 39. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. Woo! Come on, somebody. Verse 40. And the Lord shall help them. And not only will he help them, Tesh, and deliver them. Mama Ida, you see this? He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them. Why is he going to save them? Because they trust in him. Hmm? God will save you and deliver you if it is conditional. Mama Griffith. If you trust him, if you trust God, he'll sh save and deliver you. If you trust God, he'll deliver you from your enemy. If you trust him, he'll take care of your every need. Now, let me, let me say this before we end. Trusting the cold white shepherd, trusting doesn't mean that you won't be a little afraid every now and then. Hmm? Trust me, that means you, might, you won't be scared every now and then. I don't know about you. I'm saved. Love God. I read my Bible every day. Pray every day. God knows I'm imperfect. Very much so. But every now and then, fear will seep in. And if you're not careful, fear will cause you to do some stupid stuff. Fear will cause you to want to get your enemy before your enemy gets you. Fear will cause you to want to strike back before, <laughs> before they can get you first. And your street senses. I wish y'all talked with me. All of the, the, the Caterites up in here and West Endites. I wonder if they're, they're, so your street senses, stuff you was taught out in the street, taught you to get your enemy. If you know they're playing against you, get them first. And shut them down. God said, uh-uh. If you let me handle it, I got them. Now, if you jump out there yourself, that means that you are your own savior. And it, 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 it 
inspires me. You have fired me as your uh, defense attorney, and you have hired yourself to defend yourself. Here's what God says to somebody here today. We're dealing with a hater in your life. God says, as long as you trust me, as long as you sit back, let me handle it. And God says this, I will reveal to you certain things, and when I reveal them to you and give you certain action steps, you do it. But the rest of the time, sit your behind down. And be quiet. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as a green herb. God has you. Let him have it. God bless you. I'm done preaching for the day. Listen. Maybe somebody here today. Maybe somebody online today. Who's never accepted Jesus as your personal Savior. That means if today were your last day on this earth. Today were your last day on this earth. You're not sure beyond the shadow of a doubt that you see our Savior face to face. If that's you today and you want to give your life to Christ, all you have to do, you can, you can go online to our church's website, www.fbcongresham, and say that you want to become a member. Fill that form out. I mean, Pastor Carla Harris will, will give you a call this week so that she can, you can go through the, the, that process with you. Those who are here, all you have to do is just raise your hand and say, hey, Pastor, I want to join this church, and we'll make sure you get the information that you need. Secondly, there may be somebody here today you already say but you want to rededicate your life to Christ. If that's you today and you want to rededicate your life to Christ, say, Lord, I'm saved, but I, I need to reconnect with you because I've been, I've been out there doing some stuff I shouldn't have done and just not as trusting as I should be. If that's you today, God is waiting on you with open arms. No matter where you've been, no matter how long you've been out there, God is waiting on you with open arms for you to come back. If that's you today, just raise your hand, put it in the comments below. We'll make sure we, we get you covered. Thirdly, there may be somebody, listen, looking for a church home. Looking for a church home. God has laid on your heart. Be a part of this church family. We'd love to have you here at First Baptist. Love to have you. No, we're not the biggest church. And we're not a perfect church. But we love God. And we're, as a unit, trying to become more and more like Jesus Christ. Listen, if you want to be a part of this church family, we'd love to have you here at First Baptist. If that's you today, just let us know in the comments below. You can go online also, fill out that form. Pastor Carla Harris will give you a call. Fourth and finally there, maybe somebody simply standing in need of prayer. You say, preacher, I need, I need prayer. Just raise your hand. Raise your hand. Put in the comments below. I'm looking on, on, on Facebook. Put in the comments below that you need prayer. That you need prayer, that you're going through stuff right now. Sister so Jones, we're going to pray for your daughter today. We'll make sure we cover her in prayer. Pray for those who are grieving. Continue to keep Deacon Kaysen and his family lifted up in our prayers. Grieving the loss of his brother. Keep Miss Polite in our prayers. Mother Maggie Mintz. Sister Anna Thornton, I see you online. Valerie and Vinay Shorter, Tommy, I got y'all. We're going to keep you covered in our prayers. Shell, we got you. The C family, we got you covered. We're going to pray for you. Miss Kathy Jackson, our church secretary. Bless you. First cousin passed in Govan, South Carolina. We'll keep her in our prayers. Mother Mildred Ray, Mama Mitchell, I see you online. This is Deborah Haynes. Amen. Cousin Vita, we got you covered. Kim Zachary, we're going to cover you in our prayers. Shirley Green, we got you. Amen. Megan, Melita, Marie. John, baby, we got you as well. Miss Miller, we're going to keep you in our prayers. Let us bow his. Father, we thank you right now. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for being a way maker. We thank you, Lord, that you love us in spite of ourselves. Pray, Father, that you would be our guide and help us to trust you in the time of trouble. 
We pray for Aunt Reba and her family. We pray for Sister Shirley Green. We pray for Kim Zachary right now. Pray for Sister Deborah Haynes, Mama Ray, Mama Mitchell. Pray for the C family right now. Pray for Rhonda Miller right now. Pray for Valerie and Vinay Shorter right now. Sister Anna Thornton, we're praying for you right now. Shell, we're praying for you right now. Kayla Ray, we cover you in our prayers. Lynn and Kai as a whole family. Praying for Gordon right now, Naima, that he be healed from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Pray, Father, for those who are being persecuted right now, those who are going through rough patches in their lives right now, those who are without. I pray for Sister Eunice Green right now that you would heal her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. I pray for Sister Kathy Jackson, our church secretary right now. I pray for Sister Michelle Caldwell and her family right now. I thank you that Mama Alice Holmes celebrated her birthday this week. I thank you, Father, that you brought us from a mighty long way through ups and downs and all kinds of situations you have provided. You've made a way and you've rescued us from the hand of our enemy. And Father, we just want to say thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Pray for Sister Barbara Henderson and her family, Mother Maggie Mintz. We pray for Sister Polite right now that you would, <clears throat> with confidence, strengthen her in the way that only you can. Father, we just want to say thank you. We thank you that you reminded us through your word today that we don't have to worry about our enemies. We don't have to worry about those who are plotting against us. Why? Because you are our everything. You are our way maker. You are our provider. You are our lawyer in the courtroom. You're our doctor in the hospital room. You are our, our strengthener right now. We thank you. I pray for mama right now as she takes care of daddy. I pray for daddy right now that you heal his body. I pray for all of those who are going through in their lives things they've never gone through before. Father, I pray that you bless each of us I pray for Sister Jones' daughter right now that you would heal her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Your word says, as any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And you said the prayer of faith will save the sick. Well, Father, we bring right now Sister Jones' daughter before you right now. We bring Sister Bernadette's mother before you right now that you heal them, that you strengthen them, that you allow their golden days to roll on a little while longer. Father, we put our trust in you realizing realizing father that all of our help all of our help our help does not come from the hills our help does not come from democrats or republicans our help does not come from the president all of our help comes from the lord help us to put our trust in you knowing that you will take care of our needs and father now we cast all of our cares upon you because we know that you care for us have your way in our lives. It's in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen again. Come on, let's give God some praise. You may be seated. Let's give God some praise. We thank God for his goodness and his faithfulness. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, uh, we've reached a point in our celebration where we have an opportunity to give back a portion of that which God has given us. Listen, as we always say here at First Baptist, if you are not led by the Spirit to give, by no means, by no means should you ever feel forced or obligated to give here at First Baptist on Gresham. If the Lord has laid it on your heart, if the Lord has laid it on your heart, you can give in several ways here at First Baptist. Number one, you can come and drop it in the drop box. There's a drop box of those who are here today on the back door as well as one in the lobby. As you make your way out, you can drop your uh, donations in there. Secondly, secondly, listen, you can go to our church's website. Our website is www.fbcongresham.org. Click on the giving tab and follow the prompts that are on the screen there uh, so you can give securely on our church's website. Thirdly, you can text to give. Everybody text in here. Amen. All of us text at some point in our lives. You can text G-I-V-E to that number on the screen, 404-445-3324, and follow the promptings on your cell phone. Fourthly, you can uh, you can give via cash app. Our cash tag is dollar sign, capital F, capital B, capital C, capital G. 
R-E-S-H-A-M, capital R, lowercase d, FBC Gresham Road. And then fifth and finally, you can give via the app called Givelify, the one that I use each and every week. Uh, you can just download the app, uh, Givelify, look for First Baptist Church Gresham. You see our church's logo there. You see a picture of me there as well. And you can give in whatever denomination you decide to give, uh, however you want to do it, you can give. If the Lord has laid on your heart, please, by all means, feel free to give. If he has not laid on your heart, don't give. Only give. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. Only give if he lays it on your heart to give. And just know, just know that these gifts will be used for the uplifting of his kingdom. God and God alone get all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Thank you for your donations and your giving, your tithes and your offerings. Because of you, we've been able to take care of those who are in need. We've been able to keep lights on in the church and do so many things but, uh, only because of your generosity. We want to thank those who are here and those who have been giving online as well. We thank God for each and every one of you. Listen, I pray that each of you has a wonderful week that you have a good time, that you uh, celebrate the love that you have. I know we have, have Valentine's Day tomorrow, and don't let that be the only day that you show somebody's love. Come, are y'all praying with me? Amen? Don't let that be your only day. And talking about, I got you some flowers. It's, it's April. Then I got you some flowers back there in February. That should have been enough. No, you got to show love every single day. In fact, it should be, be so, so much so that Valentine ain't nothing but another day. I wish y'all talked with me here today. You got to give love every day. Give love every day. Listen, thank you all so much for joining us here at First Baptist. And we're going to have a quick word of prayer and have our benediction. Father, we thank you right now. Thank you for the time you've given us. I pray now that you help us not just to be hearers of your word, but to be doers also. Now, I pray that you bless the gifts, that you bless those who gave, bless those who wanted to give but who could not. I pray that you touch the hearts of those who may not have wanted to give for whatever reason. I pray that you bless and touch and guide and direct them so that they can experience the fullness of what worship is all about. Father, I pray that you have your way in our lives. And now may the love of God our Father, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us all now and forevermore. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen again. God bless you and have a wonderful week. God bless you.